Um, my name is Jesus. I'm going to be talking about how to become an avalanche validator. Um, this is a workshop, so if you guys, some of you guys want to get your computer out and just <laughs> hit it out with me, that would be cool. If not, I will cover a lot of the theory as well. And I have created an open source a GitHub repository so everybody can look at it. The presentation is there and some of the code is there as well. Great, great. Well, first of all, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, my company, Sensei Node. We're the first Node uh, infrastructure provider in Latin America. We're also the first Avalanche uh, validators in Latin America. We have reached on several nodes in different countries in, in Latin America, including Mexico, Brazil, Chile, and so many others. Uh, we focus on building uh, institutional grade node infrastructure. Um, my name is Jesus, I'm the chief architect, and today we're going to be using some of, the, some of our tooling and some of the monitoring tools and some of our tooling to quickly launch an Avalanche Validator node. We will be covering this on the Fuji testnet, as is, of course, less intensive on this and it's easy to learn, but the process is basically the same if you wish to do it on mainnet. So first of all, I will just cover a quick theory, <laughs> which most of you probably already know. Um, what is a node, what is a node, and what is a node important in the blockchain space. So no, nodes are the backbone of a, any blockchain, uh, as is, is, is the way, is the gateway, is like the highway to access a uh, blockchain. They store all of the data, so if you want to query a blockchain, if you want to know what your balance is, if you want to build a, a DAP, if you want to build a wallet, um, any query goes through a node, and it can, it can query the state of the node, it can query the history of the node. Uh, so in that sense, it not only allows anyone to query it and, and search information on the blockchain, everything that is stored on the blockchain, but it, can also, it also lets you interact with the blockchain. So if you want to send a transaction, if you want to deploy a smart contract, you will need a node in order to do this. And this is the great importance of a node. So you would ask, what is the difference between a node and a validator? Uh, so this seems, might seem obvious for some of you, but you know, many people get this confused, uh, and the answer is actually quite simple. Uh, nodes have different specifications, different configurations, and a validator is basically a node that has been configured to validate and verify transactions. Once those transactions are validated and, and verified, they get included in, in the blockchain. So this is very important. If we take it back to Satoshi Nakamoto and the Bitcoin world and proof of work uh, systems, uh, nodes, uh, you, what, what they do, you know, they have nodes and they have miners, right? So what miners do is they use, they consume a lot of energy because they need to, um, very, for, to you know, to verify transaction and receive the rewards. They're given a mathematical problem and they need to solve that mathematical problem to win the right to verify those transactions and earn the rewards. Uh, and this is a very interesting theory that Satoshi Nakamoto brought uh, to all, all of us all, which is, you know, having something at stake, it would actually give, uh, and, and here is the beautiful uh, blockchain and crypto world when you mix technology with economics, because that will give a, like a, a floor price, a, a theoretical floor price of what you're putting at stake to produce uh, a Bitcoin. It has a price because you, you consume electricity and you consume computational power and you need to buy the machines and so on. What Proof of Stake brought to us, which is it's a much greener uh, technology, that when you put a stake, you put coins uh, that have a value of, of that blockchain, you put that at stake, and you don't need that computational power uh, to prove that you have something at stake and to validate and verify transactions. And what this does is it makes it quicker for several networking reasons that we were not going to get into it today, but it makes it quicker and more efficient. When you put a stake, you put uh, several coins at stake, and you run a node, and you leave that node running, uh, and you leave that node not just running, but open to the world, uh, so that other peers can connect to it, and you can connect to other peers, uh, and you can validate and verify blocks. When you validate and verify blocks, you sign the block, and you put it into the network. Essential concept, each block has to concatenate with the previous block, right? Um, so it is important that you're connected to other peers, and you build the network together. So, let's just get right on it, you know. I'm a technical guy. You guys are probably technical. You came to this workshop, so 
Um, if I go too fast, you can answer questions. Uh, I can answer questions at, at the end. But there is also, like I said before, there is a, a GitHub repository, our open source sensei node slash AVAX node, and you can get not only this presentation, you will get the Docker image uh, and instructions on how to interact with the node and monitor the node, launch the node, and so on. So what are the requisites uh, or the requirements that you need uh, to cover this workshop, either here or at home? Uh, well, you need a basic Linux shell understanding, of course, uh, not very technical. I think Avalanche has made great work on making documentation very easy to follow. Um, and this is also a big part of um, why there is 16,000 Avalanche nodes out there, because it's, uh, if it, of course it's technical, but it's not as hard as building uh, you know, a Monero node. <laughs> so it's, they made that very simple, and I think they got it spot on, and that has helped a lot with decentralization. For this uh, workshop, we will be on the Fuji testnet, right? So we only need 200 gigabytes of disk space and eight gigabytes of RAM will do. Um, if you're going to do replicate exactly the same steps that we will cover today, on the mainnet, you will need, of course, a lot more space. Um, and you have to consider that the blockchain is always growing as you incorporate more blocks and more transactions, history grows. So I would recommend for mainnet one terabyte uh, and that will last you um, quite a bit. I, I'm not going to cover like all the dependencies that you have to have installed. Of course, obvious one will be Docker and Docker Compose. Uh, you have to have updated and upgraded your system. And you know, I will just assume that if you have basic Linux understanding, you will have your machine uh, updated. And well, the last one seems silly, maybe, but it's not if you want to want to run your own node and your own validator because there's other options. If you don't want to get into all of this, you can delegate and pay a commission to a running uh, validator, and uh, that process doesn't imply, doesn't require any technical skills or doing this at all. So you, you need to want to do it, and if you do, you know, I recommend you do because it will help decentralize the network and it's also a lot of fun. So. Let's get to it. Um, first, like I said, you need to update and upgrade uh, your machine. That's just recommended f before you install any program or any software in, in your server or computer. Um, I am assuming that you're using a Linux or Linux-based system. Uh, to be organized, you can make a, dir uh, a directory called Avalanche. So you make the directory called Avalanche, you go to the directory, and we're going to create an M file, and we will see later on, on, on the Docker Compose that you can also put it in manually. Uh, we do this on an, on an M file because maybe afterwards you want to put other information there so that the node can pick up. So I think it's a good practice to have a .m file. And what we're going to put there is your IP address. Why do you put your IP address there, you'll say. Um, with Avalanche, there is an important requirement that is called uptime. For you to get paid, uh, for your server to get paid and for your delegators to get paid, you need to have more than 80% uptime, right? Uh, what we have found is that when you don't put your IP, you expose your IP to the world, even though this might seem, you know, you, be, you might be more prone to DDoS attacks or uh, flood attacks and so on, uh, it makes it a lot easier for people to find your node. Because the uptime is not measured uh, in your uptime that it could be 100%. But if no one can reach your node, and then the uptime might be 100% for you, but it's not going to be 100% for the Avalanche ecosystem. And this is trickier than most people think. So we have found that you can get more than 99% uptime if you put your IP address on an M file and then pick it up when you launch the node. And we'll see this uh, later. And then you can use Nano or Vim or whatever editor you prefer. And we create the Docker Compose uh, file. A Docker Compose file can have many services. I only have one here. I recommend it to uh, have a monitor as well that we will not cover on, on this workshop. But it, can also, it will also be found on, on the GitHub. We will open source uh, some basic monitoring tools. Um, and then you'll be the service of, of the node. You'll first put the container name. Uh, and you know, 
I see some of you typing fast and taking pictures, which is good, but remember, you know, it's important if you can go there and all the information is there, you can just copy paste it, really, you know? But we can go uh, line by line. You put the container name, you can put whatever name you want, doesn't really matter. You can put Pedro's node or Avalanche node or whatever. The image that we use is one image that we built at Sensei Node, which is very quick for deployment. Uh, if you don't trust us, which is good, you know, remember, don't trust, verify. The Docker file is also on the GitHub. You can build it yourself. You can inspect it. You can see what, what we did. Basically, we used the official uh, Avalabs repository for obvious reasons. Um, you'll put the restart policy. You know, let's just, the usual uh, recommended policy is, you know, just stop only when I tell you to stop. <laughs> and if I didn't tell you to stop, start the node again. We'll pick up the M file. And we'll open some ports. Ports are important because it's how we will communicate with other nodes and how we will communicate with our monitoring tools or when, when, with your dApps when you want to develop the dApps and so on. And we will mount a volume. Very important to mount a volume. If you don't mount a volume, when you stop the node and you start the node again, <laughs> you will feel very bad because you'll have to synchronize the whole blockchain. And that process right now takes a couple of days. So. Important to mount the volume so you can stop and restart the node, change the configuration, start it again, and the whole blockchain will be saved uh, on your host machine. And then you put the command lines that you will usually use to start the nodes. On this case, we'll use uh, the network ID Fuji because we will be on the Fuji testnet. Uh, what you do when you want to start at the mainnet, you don't put uh, network ID mainnet, you, just, you can just comment that out or slash it out. It will automatically start uh, on mainnet. Uh, HTTP host is important if you want your API exposed, which is, which is probably what you want if you're building a DAP or if you want to monitor your node. And then we'll pick up the public IP so that we can expose it to the world as well. So you will start this. You will put Docker Compose up. I use a detach mode, which you can just start it on a screen or a TMUX. And then if you do Docker Compose logs AVAX, you probably get an error <laughs> because I changed it. That, that is just Docker logs AVAX. Docker Compose will give you an error. I changed the presentation, but it's not here. Um, and then you'll see the node start. The node will, will start and it will give you all of this information that some of it is really important and it will be required. We, we, all of this information we can query as well uh, in the local API that it will be uh, started when the node starts. It will tell you the node version and the node ID. Most important thing here, if you want to become a validator, is the node ID. But you don't have to grab the logs to get it. Um, what you can get it through, you know, core post, or you can use Python request model or JavaScript or whatever language you feel more comfortable with. But the first thing for the node to be able to um, to be used, you need the node to be synchronized, right? Uh, Avalanche has three chains. It has the X change, the P change, the C change. So you have to query all those chains to see if the node is synchronized, and you have to wait, basically. <laughs> I've been told that the synchronized with the Avalabs is working um, really good with the synchronization process, and they will, they are, they are constantly working on making this faster. Uh, currently, for testnet, it will take you around, depending on your machine and on your cost and how fast it writes the blockchain to the disk, it'll probably take you one to two days to be synchronized on the, on the future testnet. So for those of you following uh, the workshop up to this point, now you wait. And then you keep two days later, you will have to go to the GitHub and uh, finish the workshop. So it's a basic so that you wait. And as you can see there in the, in the, params, in the parameters, uh, I am querying that if the X chain is synchronized. And this will return a true or false, a Boolean statement, right? Um, if it says true, then it's synchronized. If it says false, you have to wait. Usually, you can get more sophisticated methods to just query it, and you can expose it using Nuxt or Flask or whatever you want and put it on the website and just look at it while it syncs, which is quite cool, which is cool. If you're a nerd, it's cool. <laughs> uh, but then you, have, you change. Um, they were querying the X chain. You have to see the P chain as well and the C chain. All of three need to be synchronized in order for you to be able to validate. So, and this is what I was saying before about the node ID. Uh, in order to be able to validate or to receive delegations, you need to know what your node ID is. Your node ID, 
And this is a great, great technology that we didn't have in the past. I've been building nodes for several years now on different technologies, started with Peercoin. So it was very different to this. You had to have your active key or your key that holds your phones, you had to have it on your server that has had the node because you signed the blocks with your active key. And this is like ancient technology, but some blockchains still have some form of keys and uh, store in the server. And this is very, very dangerous because you can get hacked, you can make a mistake, your server can get deleted, you know, you got fat, fat finger and, and deleted. All of this, has, if you guys are technical, has probably happened to you, so it happened to me as well. So what Avalanche did, which is great, is they separate your node ID from your keys. Uh, and I, I can't state enough how important this is and how magical this is because your node will be running on one side and then your keys and your money will be uh, guarded separately. You can guard it offline, you, it can be completely separated from the node because the node has to be online all the time and that carries out risk on key management. If something that is online, even if you are an expert in security, it has risk because it's online. Here you separate it. You will bind your node ID with the 2000 avalanche that is needed. You need 2000 avalanche to register a validator and that is completely separate. And how do you bind this node ID? Well, here you will copy this uh, node ID. You will copy it down and then we will just leave the server to sync. Once it's synced, it's like those programs where you, you get the cake out, <laughs> the cooking programs. Once it's done, you will go and you can do it several ways, but I will just do the official Avalanche wallet. You go to wallet.avax.network and you will either import uh, your private key. And, you, and here is, is good because you can use a ledger, you can use hardware wallet, you can create your keys, you can store them safely, however, you, however way you, you use to store your keys. You will create a wallet. I'm not going to go through the process of creating a wallet. I will assume that if you're here, you have probably created an avalanche wallet or you, you, you have done this already, you have an avalanche wallet. And then because we're covering the Fuji testnet, which is always recommended if you want to run a validator or any, any process that you want to do, you, you run it in a, in a testnet environment. Um, you can go to this false set here, false slash test.network, and you can put your wallet and you will receive two avalanche, two avax. So you say, how can I validate with two avax? I need 2000, so I need to click this, you know, a <laughs> hundred times <laughs> or more, and then I get 2000. No, in the testnet, you only need one avax to validate, which, which makes sense. I was a bit worried about this too. I was like, how am I going to do this? Um, you only need one avax to register your validator. So you will receive two, which is more than enough. And most validators on the Fuji testnet have very little AVAX, so you will be able to validate and, and test your networking uh, node, which is the most important part here, because otherwise you can just create a validator on a local environment. But here we want to actually connect to other peers, see what your uptime is, etc. So you will receive the AVAX, and then you will receive that on the exchange. So on the left side of the, of the wallet, you will have, a, you have to cross your tokens from the X to the P-chain, which is similar to other blockchains when they have a stake. Well, when you cross it, it's like you have a stake on the, on the P-chain, you have a lock. Um, you will just put how much you want to transfer. In this example here, I put 0 0.5, that won't be enough. You need at least one if you're doing the future testnet. So you will transfer it to a P-chain, that's done very, very fast. You need one block confirmation. And once it's transferred, you will go to the tab that says earn, and you click on validate. And here is where you put your node ID that we got in the previous uh, process when we query our node. So you put the node ID, and another important thing is you will put the end date. How many of you have actually delegated or have run a validator here? Okay, okay, I was expecting more, but good. <laughs> I, I will also run through the process of, de of, of delegation because you know if you have AVA AVAX, it's why not put it to work and receive some rewards, right? Um, well, so then four of you know that you have an end date. Each validator has an end date when they stop validating. And when that end date arrives, uh, you, will re you receive your rewards. That's when 
the validator receives his its rewards of the 2,000 AVAX that he put in, and also the commission from everybody that delegated to him. And also the delegators will receive it, right? So you can put it one month, two months, three months, some people put a year. This is completely up to you. It depends on how often you want to receive your payments. Just take into consideration that this is something that delegators will also look at, because some delegators also have their own ideas on uh, how recurring they want their payments to be. You will put the end date, you will put your stake amount, in this case once is sufficient, and you put your delegation fee. Delegation fee is what you will charge people who delegate your node. It's not what you will charge in the total amount of the AVAX that they will delegate to you. It's what you charge on the rewards that people that delegate you will receive, right? So if they delegate to you a thousand AVAX, and the reward is 10%, you will charge in this scenario 2% of 100 AVAX, right? And depending on how much you stake, and this is another important uh, thing to consider, uh, is the amount that you can receive as delegation, right? So when you get 2,000, you, you can receive uh, four times that, you can receive 8,000 uh, AVAX through delegations. Uh, and that's what max delegation amount means. So it means if, people, if, you, if you stake more as a validator, you will be able to receive more delegation. Of course, it's a whole different... What's the maximum amount of... of it depends on how much uh, you stake. You need to, when you register your validator, you put minimum 2,000, but you can put 3,000, 4,000. So in this case, you put one, your delegations of four. If you put 10, you will be able to receive 40. If you put 100, you will be able to receive 400, and so on. Okay, so I've got 20,000 AVAX, it makes no sense to run 10 nodes. It makes sense to run one node with 20,000. Sure, yeah, that's, a, that's completely up to you. Ah. Or you can put, set, it, it's, more, it's, it's, it's more of a marketing strategy if you want to reach delegations, right? You will get rewards on whatever you put in. If you want to reach delegations, for example, I'll just put something different that is important for us as Sensei Node. We might want to have one node in Brazil with 2,000, and we might want to have one node in, in Mexico, because it might be important for people in Mexico to feel represented and to maximize the decentralization of the network. That is important to us, and that is probably important to, to the Avalabs and, and, and other people that are concerned about the situation, but it might not be important for someone who just wants to receive a delegation. He just wants to stake and receive his rewards and just put it on one node. It's cheaper because you will only be running one node and you have to pay for the server. So yes, you are correct. Um, staking duration, it will tell you, and the estimated rewards that you will receive. When you confirm this, uh, it will take a little while, a couple of minutes, to be included in the validator set. And you can check if you're included in the validator set, if you go to uh, Avascan, uh, of course, make sure you are on the testnet uh, side of Avascan, otherwise you won't see your validator. And you can just put in the search, uh, you can just put your node ID or you can just change that URL and put your uh, node ID there. And what you will see, you see a lot of information, you'll see if you're active. If you go straight away after you do this, you will see pending. Uh, um, but that, that won't take very long. You wait a couple of minutes and you will see it active. You see your node ID and you see the beneficiary. The beneficiary, you can change it on the previous step. If you don't change it, it will just go to your wallet. But you can send your payment to a different wallet, which is quite, quite cool you, that you can customize that. You will see time left. And basically, you see the IP. The IP will, will be exposed. And this is a little bit of what I, I was telling you about the performance. You can see how the performance is not measured by what you consider your uptime to be or what your real uptime is. Your real uptime could be 100%. But they will check other peers. They will, they will see what other peers report about you. And, and, and this is important here. So if you don't put the IP, this could go down to 90%, 89%, because it will be different for other peers to find you. On this case, if you expose your IP, we have tested and done you know, several work on this. And it's also recommended by... Um, by documentation, official documentation of Avalanche, uh, you will get, in this case, we got 99.99, but it will be something along the line. So what happens if you don't have the 2,000 Avalanche uh, AVAX to, to create your own validators? Of course, you can delegate. 
I thought this would be <laughs> a very quick slide, but since only four of you have delegated, um, and maybe a bit more because sometimes people are shy, but probably a bit more, but not many people delegated. So you can just delegate and you don't have to do all of the process of running a server, setting up the server, which is a lot of fun, but it also costs a bit of money and you need to have the 2000 AVAX. So if you go to the wallet, you can, uh, and instead of putting validate, you can put delegate. And when you put delegate, you will see all the different node IDs uh, and you see how much they have available, like, uh, like we talked just a few minutes ago, that depending on how much you have uh, staked, you have available for delegations, and you see the end time. So you can calculate when you want to receive your payment. Like if you don't care, if you're a long-term holder, you can just put six months, a year, whatever, you will get paid more, same percentage, but you'll get paid more and you don't have to worry about it. If you want to be monitoring your payments and having recurring payments, you can choose someone that has an end time that is closer to a month or two months. And you see the fee that that validator has set up to charge you uh, on your rewards. It's not, like I said before, it's not on the total amount that you will delegate, that would be crazy. It's on the rewards uh, that you receive. But also sometimes 2%, sometimes 20%. Yes. So that I can, for, for example, I'm a, de a delegator and can choose 2% all the time. There's a yes. difference in security for me. There's no difference in security. What you need to choose is a validator that has uptime because the delegator might have 2%. But then if, it, if that delegator has an uptime that is below 80%, you will get nothing. Okay. He will not get paid and you will not get paid. So it is a relation, uh, and there is 16,000 validators for you to choose from. And this is a fun part that I leave to you. Of course, I recommend that you choose us. Uh, if you like decentralization, we have nodes. We, have, we had the first node in, in, in Latin America. We're building many more. Uh, so please support us. Our node ID is on our GitHub. Um, we have been active. How and much, how much fee do you charge? We have a 10% fee at the moment, and we have a very high uptime, which is the most important thing. The uptime right now is 80% because uh, uh, we were listening in on, on the Ava, Ava Labs um, uh, conference, and they wanted to make it accessible for most people that want to build a, a validator to be able to do it and you know, not be so strict. It used to be 60%, and this will go up in time. Uh, so every time it will be more important that you select proficient validators that are very far away from 80. So basically what you have to look at is a low fee and high uptime. If you don't want to choose a validator that has 82% uptime, because you don't know if that is going to go below, and you basically have your money. You will have your money in return, but you won't have any rewards. So it's basically choosing that. So, but what happens if you want to run a validator because you, you care about decentralization and you want to run your own validator, and if you have, and this is a, a bit of a mathematical thing that you will need to do on your, on your own, if you have a lot of stake, it's probably better to pay uh, whatever it costs to run a validator um, and not pay the commission to another validator that runs your validator. So if you don't have the tech skills for you, Want to run a validator? Well, we have you covered. You can go to senseino.com and you can ask us for a validator. We'll set up a validator uh, in different countries that we can give you access to and we will give you a nice dashboard where you can monitor if it's synced, if it's up, how much will be your reward, and so on and so on. So, well, this is all for me. I hope uh, this was helpful and I hope many of you will actually go and build your own validator because this will help the decentralization of, of the network. We need nodes in different parts of the world by different entities. Uh, this helps uh, decentralization of all blockchains and Avalanche really has this well covered because it has 16,000 validators. So like I said before, this is all on GitHub, but also if you have any questions, if you want to reach out, you can write to me at jesus at senseino.com. Thank you very much for coming, and I think we have a little time for any questions that you might have. Yes, there's a lot of questions. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. So, yes. yes. That was very interesting. Thank you. Um, have you any comments or experience with running something like that on the AWS services now that are available? Have you any hmm. thoughts on that? Yes, um, AWS uh, makes things very simple, right? They, they are a big company, they make it very simple. So uh, yes, you can run it on AWS. 
you can run it uh, on any other data center. The important thing here is that is the uptime is as high as possible. So you can run this at home if you have a Linux machine and you have to, you have, to have it connected. You know, light doesn't have to you know, go out. <laughs> you need to have inter good internet connection, good bandwidth. So the best thing if you want to do this professionally is to run it uh, on services that will give you high uptime. That could be a data center with your own bare metals, with your own machine, with your own servers, or that could be very well AWS. I would, if you have experience in AWS, I would recommend you do it on AWS because you will just, you will just spin it really fast. You can use our Docker Compose image and just, you know, you. you will be up and ready in minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, you mentioned uh, requirements on uh, memory and uh, storage. Yes. But what are the requirements on GPU or CPU? Uh, yeah, I think with eight, eight, uh, no, you don't need GPU, which is good because GPUs are expensive. You need CPU. Uh, with eight cores, you will be okay. You'll be covered. Uh, I always recommend also on, on the RAM side to have some swap. You can have some swap. If you have a fast disk like SSD or NVMe, you can just put some swap as well, just in case there is like a high peak in, in, in usage or querying your node, you will have a peak on the RAM consumption. And it's, it's good to have a little bit of swap as well. But A8 a virtual CPU will be okay. Okay, another question I have is, um, so you said there's no upper bound of uh, staking uh, or, 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 uh, or amount of AVEX you can have to operate your uh, validator, is that mm. right? There, there is. Uh, what is <laughs> the total supply of avalanche? You, you, it uh, can't be more than that. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I haven't, if, I haven't reached the like. If you saw on the screenshot before, there are people that have two million avax. Yeah, uh, but I mean, that, that's a design problem, isn't it? If you would put an upper bound on it, let's say minimum is two thousand, which I don't understand. Well, you know, uh, anyways, but let's say if the upper bound is ten thousand, then you're forced to decentralize more. Then yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're forced that's a good to point. open more. That is a good point. Yeah, that is a good point. And what is the reason also? The, uh, no, no, I, I didn't create the protocol, but it's a good point. Yeah. It's a good point because if you put a, a, a small upper bound, then you will be forced to create more nodes. Yeah, yeah. and more uh, redundancy, right? Yeah, so, yeah. I think, the, my, I, I think that's a very major problem. <laughs> There's no okay. upper bound anyway. Uh, somebody from Avalanche. Uh, uh, yes, it's so, for someone from Avalabs too. But I will transmit your, your concerns because I haven't thought about it, but it's true. S32 ETH. Anyway, um, I, I think my question is about the uh, signing of the keys. Um, yes. First question. So we can use HSM. Uh, so the server does not need to persist like, on 24 word seed or 12 word seed. No. We can use HSM or something offline. Yes. Oh, that's very interesting. That's Second really question is about slashing. Um, what are the, you know, s what, what, in what cases do you get slashed? No slashing. What? You either get paid or you don't get paid. Oh. Also, if you're really crappy validator, then you won't get paid. Uh, if you have more than 80% opt-in, then you will get paid. At the moment, there is no slashing. Uh, I'm not from Avalab, so I can't speak officially. Uh, there might be some slashing in the future, so I've heard. But at the moment, there is no slashing. So could you do double signing using HSM and there's no slashing? If you do, yes, you do, double, don't slash it, but you, if you do double signing, you probably won't get paid. Uh, Double signing, it's not recommended. But <laughs> Thank you. Oh, cool. There is an upper bound, three million. I didn't know about this. Three million, I think. Three million, it's, it's a high upper bound. Yes. It's, it's a high. Yes. I haven't, we haven't reached the upper bound. We hope to reach it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't know about the upper bound. Hi. I hey. don't have that problem at the moment. Hi, thank you. Great talk. Um, thank um, you. About a week or two ago, they released a stability score on their website sure. for validators. I'm wondering if you had a chance to look at that. And they recommend that you know you make sure you have enough CPU, memory, networking. You know, yes. if all that stuff is fine and the stability score is still not where you want it to be, I'm yeah. wondering if you've looked at that at all. And I know it's kind of early, so yeah, no, sorry. No, we've, we've, we've looked at it. Is is is. It's kind of complex. The, the uptime, we, we found that it was kind of tricky, and it's been tricky for other validators that we know. It's tricky since it's measured from the outside and other peers. Um, there, is, there is a lot to look into that. What we have found is, and my ba very basic recommendation is that if you have a good firewall, and if you have a good setup, you expose your IP and monitor your node. 
the monitoring tools, you can, you know, if you can code, you can build them in, based on the cure commands. There's other cure commands that will give you the uptime, network uptime, and so on. On the Avalanche documentation, you can have all of them. So it's just, you know, build a node, monitor it. Uh, if you don't want to expose your IP, which will be more safe uh, or safer, uh, you can do that as you monitor and then you see what we have found is that if we expose it and if you have good security to expose your IP, um, then the uptime is, is good. Um, but it's, it's quite tricky. It's, it's something that you need to look at with, you know, sit down, grab a coffee and, and try to understand it. And it's not us uh, that think like this. Other validators also have found a lot of trouble with it. Hello, I'm from DeFi Kingdom and we're Hi. launching our uh, subnet Great. Uh, yes. now. And for the first uh, while, we'll only have uh, a key set of val um, validators, but we're going to open up and allow other people to validate for us. I was wondering, what's, uh, what's your take on supporting subnets with your uh, setup? We really much want to support subnets, and we can talk about this uh, after the talk. Uh, it is our idea to support subnets. We have looked at it with our team. We have looked at DeFi Kingdoms. Uh, and this is something that we will do. We will support subnets. Uh, I'm not sure we will support all, all subnets, but we would love to support your subnet as well. <laughs> so it's good you came. Any other questions? If not, well, you can just reach me there. Follow us on Twitter, Sensei Node. Uh, we keep in touch. I hope you build your validators.